sáng đã xem trên kênh youtube của mình ngày hôm nay mình cùng các bạn đi thua mò nha This is the one who keeps it moving. He stocks the right parts and knows just where to find them. Because this is about more than business. The industrial grade products you need. Call, click or stop by Granger for the ones who get it done. The future of the Coyotes not completely known. Arizona won the finale last night. Mark felt goodbyes. The team social media posting see you in June for the draft. Then they took that down. In the stripping of the arena after, there's video of a fan giving Shane Doan his retired jersey banner. All of the news on this coming out in the past week that a vote of the Board of Governors is happening today. But a move to Salt Lake City looks like it's right here. Woody Page, how will you remember the Phoenix, Arizona Coyotes? I won't remember anything about them as a team, but I will remember Why, they played in an arena with Arizona State that's called Mullet Arena, okay, what, really? What he, and the one he, they played in before that. <laughs> okay, never mind. No, no, I, I mean, I don't just don't be dancing on somebody's grave here. Go ahead, Kevin Blackstone. Well, I just remember that this was the experiment in the desert, and in and, and the end, it just didn't work. Um, and I feel bad about those fans. Uh, they should not have had to go through this just like this. Where was the where was the prologue to this? It came very very suddenly. Uh, I mean, you're not wrong about that, Kevin Blackstone. We'll move on. Tampa Bay Rays. Pete Fairbanks blew a game, and then after he said, well, "I thought it generally sucked. I didn't think it was a specific <laughs> suck. I thought it was like an all-encompassing type of suck." Or maybe yeah, it's a 10, KB, it's like where do you come down on honesty and overall of, suck? Of salt and then oh my goodness, this is fantastic. This is all you want out of your interview with an athlete or a coach. You want them to tell you the absolute mm -hmm. truth, and he gave it to you right there. I almost felt sorry for the guy after a while. I think I would have shut off the camera. Page. Kevin, mm -hmm. we appreciate honesty, but guess what? He can't come back and do it again tomorrow night because then he'll be called repeat. What's he going to tell us uh, this? <laughs> That if he oh, continues to pitch All right, what do you, what do you just stop talking right now, please? I'm gonna have a moment of honesty here with Kevin Blackstone. Kevin, love you, but Woody just made the Hall of Fame. He needs his face time today. He's gonna win showdown even with negative numbers. Let's go. Uh, gosh, I, I want to thank the Colorado Sports Hall of Fame for this badge that looks like I won third place in the box. Oh, what you said, it's a beautiful medal, come on. Mini, oh yeah, yeah look this, at that. This plaque is incredible. But the theme of my speech last night is to what I say to all the viewers today, persevere. Perseverance, I think, in this country with what's going on, perseverance with what we've overcome uh, in the history of this sports, I think is important. Just remember, always persevere. Love you, Woody. Pardon the interruption, but I'm Mike Wilbon. It's National Newspaper Columnist Day, Tony. Cheers to us. What do you miss most about sports writing? I'm Tony Kornheiser. That's easy. The yachts and the private jets, right? Yeah, oh, sure. I mean, you know what? If somebody I mean, asks me right now what I am professionally, I st the response that's coming out of my mouth is yeah, I'm a columnist. Sports writer. Yeah, yeah sports yeah, no, writer. I get that. Uh, but my memory plays tricks on me. You're saying that we didn't have yachts and private jets when we wrote columns? Oh, wow. Sure. <laughs> Who knew? Who knew? Welcome to PTI, boys and girls. In today's episode, the Sixers scrape by, Tanner Houck throws a Maddox, and Kendrick Perkins joins us for five good minutes. But we begin today with the news that Miami's Jimmy Butler will miss tomorrow night's win-or-go-home play-in game against the Chicago Bulls due to a right MCL injury he suffered last night. The long-term prognosis is as yet unclear. Will Vaughn, you love Butler and you love I the do. Bulls who drummed I the do. Hawks last night. Where does this leave the Heat? Leaves them without their best player, their most important player. Uh, leaves them without a guy who can lead them in the playoffs past essentially anybody because he's done it. Gotten to the finals multiple times, conference finals obviously multiple times. It leaves them without their second best defender after Bam out of bio. It leaves them without a guy who's all court, just a creative, really smart player and a guy who's fearless. He's just got guts. The fact that he finished last night's game is amazing, Tony, because after the, the fall, 
I thought, okay, there's no way Jimmy Butler can finish this. He's playing. He's, he's getting a fifth steal even after he's injured, and it leaves them yeah. in no position yep. to even. I, look, I thought the Bulls, the Bulls are a weird team. I thought they might beat Miami anyway. And now without Jimmy Butler, I don't see them getting Miami. past the Bulls tomorrow night. They, Miami had to go on a 15-1 run last year in the fourth quarter of a play-in game to beat the Bulls and get – you know, into that main draw and make that run. I don't see that happening. And even if they do, can they beat Boston with Jimmy Butler at least early in that series? Compromiser, I know. It's, it's just sad for me because I love Jimmy Butler, particularly this time of year. There is a playoff Jimmy, and it's a thrill to watch, and they don't have that. Yeah, so I'm going to echo much of what you said here. I'm going to yeah, say right off the top what a warrior Jimmy Butler was last night. He did not shoot well. He was 5 of 18, but as you say, he made five different steals, and he played 40 minutes, which means he played 31 minutes on an injured leg, and you could yeah. see him wincing as he went up and down the court. That was very visible, so I tip my hat to him. Can uh, Miami beat Chicago without him? Sure. I mean, you know, yep. come on. Yep. Chicago's not a particularly good team. They're no. a 39 and 43 team. They're not going to get 42 points from Kobe White again because they never got 42 points from him before. <laughs> right. That was right. that was a one shot deal. So yeah, and and by the way, even without Jimmy Butler, Miami is better than the Hawks. So Miami can win this game, but they can't win. That's it. Better okay, than, well, yeah. because what Bulls. is waiting? are the Celtics. Now, if the Bulls win, they will be swept by the Celtics, El Sweepo. Yep. And if, if, if Miami wins, maybe they get one game, but they will likely be swept, too, because there's a revenge factor, Mike. Last year, it was Miami that got rid of Boston in, yeah. in the playoffs, yeah. right? And that was mostly because of Jimmy Butler. So yes. if he's not going to play, do the math. They can't win. I know, Tony. I was so looking forward. As much a Bulls fan as I am, my entire life, I was seven years old when the franchise came into existence. All my life, I follow and cheer for the Bulls. But, man, a, a, a Jimmy Butler Miami versus Boston series would have been irresistible again. And we're not going to – I mean, I don't think we're going to see it because even if we see the series, I don't know how much Jimmy Butler, if any, we get. It's just a downer. It's a bummer. So we're going to move to the Sixers. They were down 12 to the Heat at halftime with Joel Embiid struggling. But Philly's big man bounced back with 11 in the fourth. And Nicholas Batum added 20 points. I think he had five threes. And a key block shot on a Six. Tyler Hero three attempt. And the Sixers won by a single point, And now they face your yeah. Knicks. Tony, do you come away yeah. from last night's game more or less confident in what you saw from the Sixers? I come away less confident, and I say that Jeez. knowing that I saw Joel Embiid in the fourth quarter, as you say, get 11, not just get 11, make two great interior passes and get a couple of offensive rebounds. He's the reason they won that game, him and the fact yep. that Batum, who actually had six threes, played out of his mind. And I understand it's very dangerous to go against Philadelphia when Embiid is on the court, because when he's on, on the court, I think they're 32-8, and eight, okay? But I watched the game, Mike. He can't move laterally. He, he, no. he just cannot do it. And it's yeah. important to be able to do that. I actually thought the, the key play of the game was going to be when Jimmy Butler stole the ball off his dribble and went down the other end basically laughing. I did not think, I did not think Philadelphia would win that game. Now, look, I'm no great fan of the Knicks, as you know, but I think you have to look at Embiid and, and how he struggled last night moving. And when they isolated on him in timeouts, how exhausted he seemed. And you yeah. have to wonder, can he play all the games in this series? I'm not sure he can. Tony, all that's fair, and particularly when you talk about playing against a Tom Thibodeau defense, which is going to bump him. They're going to move him. They got some size back, you know, down low. Down there. And B wasn't even near the basket because he has no power. His, he can't, his legs can't generate that yet. And they hit those threes, as you mentioned. Those are huge threes and the passes that he made. Look, he's been a warrior, too. Then you, you said, let me give you some credit, because I know he's not your favorite player, but you said yesterday you like that this matters to him. And I agree right. with that, Tony. That's it right. It really matters to him, B, that he can go as far as he can in these playoffs, at least get to the conference finals, which he hasn't been. But, Tony, like you, I'm looking at that New York defense and the physicality, the personality they play with, and I'm thinking, wow, 
can can Joel do this? And now he's going to get more help from Maxi, who did not have a great game last night. And I I think that they're going to be able to pitch in around him, Tony. And I'm still interested to see it, but I don't know how much he has physically for them. Mike, let me just say this. The Knicks have some really good shooters, and Embiid's not going to be able to close out. He can't move laterally. He just can. Let's move to baseball, where last night's Red Sox starter, Tanner Houck, threw a Maddox. That's a complete game shutout in under 100 pitches. Houck threw 94 pitches against Cleveland, 